Hey guys, welcome to today's episode and we have Dr. Nicole Rothman and we are going to be talking about fasting, we're going to be talking about hormones, we're going to be talking about menopause and so much more. So Dr. Nicole, tell us a little bit about yourself and what got you into being so passionate about fasting and hormones. Hi, I'm so happy to be here. Um, I'm been in functional medicine for a really long time. I've been in practice in the last 26, 27, 26 years in chiropr- as a chiropractor, but I always worked to help people change their lifestyle. So that became my real passion. And in 2017, I kind of gave up what I was doing and really started focusing on more functional medicine and in general, just working with people, trying to help them get healthy. And just somehow I was attracting women. uh, At that time, I was in my early 40s. So all of a sudden, I have these 40 something women that were like really wanting my help, really needing my help. So I started diving into learning all the hormones and understanding what it means to have healthy hormones. How do we transition in this stage in our lives? And it just, it just kind of fell in my lap. It just kind of happened because women would tell me things like my doctor doesn't understand me. Um, I'm being told my labs are normal, but I don't feel normal. I'm being told it's just my age or my genetics. I feel hopeless. I'm not being heard. I feel dismissed. And it really made me passionate to want to do something about that. So before you know it, I started focusing my attention on women in menopause. And it just became my absolute purpose and passion because I myself am am in menopause too. And I see women that are in hell. And then I look at myself, I'm like, so grateful. I'm not going through those things, but it's like, well, what am I doing? That's so different than what they're doing. And that's what I really teach people now is how do you live a healthy lifestyle where you can have certainty with your health, feel good now, not have to rely on hormones not have to, because a lot of people don't want to have to take those. I know there are some people love them. I'm not going to like knock them, but a lot of people don't, a lot of women really don't want that as their answer, or they can't because of their family history or their own history. And, um, yeah, so, so that's really, it just became my passion. So tell us a day in the life of Dr. Nicole and what allows you to be able to give us a couple of sample things that you do that allows you to be able to go through menopause without having to have bioidentical or any other kind of hormones? Well, the biggest thing that I learned was I have to have more me time and more self-care than ever before. The things I used to do in the gym, I'm not doing those kinds of things anymore. I'm trying to keep my body in the lowest stress state possible. So I wake up in the morning, I get up, my alarm goes off at 444, believe it or not. And it reminds me to be grateful. It reminds me to have gratitude when I see that time. And then I get up, I make a green tea. It's really great for inflammation. And then I use my my brain tap, which is a neuroplasticity training tool. It's a headset where I do a meditation and there's all different meditations. Um, and as a matter of fact, when I first went like stop getting my period, I got hot flashes for a little while. And I was like, Oh, I gotta, I gotta get on this immediately. Um, so I started taking just some different supplements based on my own labs and doing meditations to help me with hot flashes that were retraining my brain. So I love my brain tap. Then I head to a workout. Either I take a a walk or I do a weight workout. Weights are really, really important at this stage. I can't stress that enough that if you're going to be doing like spin class and Zumba class and running and all the heavy cardio, that is really going to cause too much cortisol and your adrenals to be stressed out. The thing that happens in menopause that I want people to really learn is it's not that we don't make hormones anymore. That's what people, women are being told you don't make them anymore. That's not true. The actual truth is your ovaries give the job of making your estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone to your adrenal glands. So these little stress glands that have been, you know, working their butts off trying to like have their job, be a mom, be a spouse, look good, maybe take care of your parents, like the stresses of life, all the things that we all have, because women, we have two full-time jobs, most of us. 
and like meaning at work and also at home, right? And now we go running all, you know, stressed out into our 40s and our adrenals are incapable of making the level of hormones that aren't going to be enough to have babies, but should be enough where we can have a good sex drive, have, you know, juices flowing in our body, not have a big belly, not have a bunch of brain fog and crappy sleep. We should have enough there. So in that, it's like, how can I spend my day doing things to be proactive with my stress management, like putting in breathing exercises. And halfway through my day, I, I, I'm on Zoom all day. Uh, halfway through my day, I turn off the computers, I turn off the lights, I go lay down and I do another, a second meditation, actually. Mm -hmm. 20, 20 minutes. It's not like I'm spending hours doing this. I don't have that. But I want to like shut off the lights, calm my brain, calm my body, and I really just find supporting my adrenals in this way, it's just, it's just massively effective. And so I would say, it, and then, and then it's really good to have a bedtime routine too. It's well, really I want, I want to address. So one thing I've done completely different is I only go to the gym early two days a week. Um, I used to be up at 4am, 4.30, sometimes five every day. I would go to the gym. I had this routine and blah, blah, blah. And then I was off to work. And now I am in a totally different space. So I let my body sleep to whenever I want to wake up five days a week. That's great. Sometimes even, but even on the two days a week now, I'm getting up at 630. So it's not like I'm getting up at four anymore. I'm getting up at 615 or 630. The rest of the time I'm sleeping to whenever my body wants to wake up. So talk about how that, how important that is and kind of what else you can do to reduce that stress for the cortisol. Yeah. I mean, sleep is absolutely critical. I go to bed by nine, nine 30 every night. So I wake up many times before my alarm. And I, I, I go to bed at eight thirty, eight forty five. Like everyone knows like, Oh my gosh, it's eight 30. Chantel is in bed <laughs> sleep. Yeah. Like you're not going to hear from me. My phone is in the other room. That's a really good way to reduce stress. I turn off my phone. And actually there's a setting that automatically puts my phone on sleep mode at a certain hour where it just shuts off. So I'm not getting alerts. I'm not getting, it's automatic. I don't have to do it myself. Um, and, and it goes away. It goes away. So I feel like the phone is such a huge distraction. It's very stressful. We're seeing all kinds of things. It creates triggers and different parts of us are affected. In addition to that, it's the blue light is really going to affect your melatonin and your ability to make melatonin. So certain lighting is going to make it harder for you to sleep. And if you're not getting the sleep, you're not going to feel good during the day. You're going to be more stressed. It creates a vicious cycle, actually. Um, to me, the two most important things right now, actually not just sleeping, but also pooping, <laughs> Poop and sleep, just like babies, if they're doing that, they're good. Well, we're the same way. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I am stressed. And if you're feeling overwhelmed this holiday season, then I get it. With all the family get togethers, it is just a relentless source of stress. But anyway, there is something that I've got called Stress Guardian. And it's actually made by Bioptimizers, the people who make the magnesium breakthrough, which I love, love, love. But anyway, they are literally made this new product. It has 14 adaptogenic herbs and it just regulates your stress. I just actually took some right this second. And it's awesome. If you go to stressguardian.com slash waste away and put in waste away for 10% off your first order. It's stressguardian.com slash waste away. Go there now. So I want to talk about that because I, just so you know, my number one issue is that I'm massively constipated. And so with fasting, like one of the things that I will say, and I don't care, listen, I am a fasting queen. Nobody's probably done more fasting than me. And I feel like the one thing that fasting will not help with is constipation. It actually will, if you have a problem with constipation, fasting actually makes constipation worse. I am, you know me, I'm 
This whole podcast is about intermittent fasting and I'm a big fan of it. But if you have a problem with constipation, fasting actually makes it worse. And I feel like, um, you know, that's one area. It's funny because I had a friend of mine who was a big time faster and he said, that's one area that same thing it did, you know, really didn't help him with. It was in your gut as far as the constipation goes. So let's talk about some of the things uh, all about pooping. And one of them I want to talk about is, you know, I have a friend of mine that's using regular uh, hormones. They're having testosterone put in. It's a guy friend that I know, uh, friends of my husband. And he his doctor gives him DIM and he gives him regular testosterone, but then he also gets DIM because DIM lowers estrogen levels. And I was like, wow, that is crazy that he's getting regular testosterone, not even bioidentical, regular testosterone, but his doctor's also giving DIM uh, to reduce his estrogen. So talk a little bit about how important it is for that, that you actually can poop out your estrogen, so to speak. Do you understand what I'm saying? As far as like, we'll call, it detox. We'll call it detox estrogen. Cause that's, that's the main thing. Okay. And so talk about things. that. A couple of things. I just would like to say something because you brought up your own personal health challenge. And there's two things that you said that make me think a lot about thyroid. The first thing made me think of thyroid. And then when you told me you're constipated all the time, it also made me think about your thyroid because that is a true sign of constipation. And someone that sleeps for eight or nine or more hours every day, that's a lot of hours. So already you had my antenna up like, I really want to know all of her different 10 different thyroid tests of what's going on because you can actually be severely constipated if your thyroid is sluggish in any way or if your liver is not converting your T4 to your T3 effectively. And having a sluggish liver will also give you constipation, by the way. Yes, 100% agree. So what are some of the things that you suggest? Give us a couple of tips to help people- oh. <laughs> to poop and to get rid of a sluggish liver. Well, the liver, you know, everybody's different. So it, it is challenging with the liver because some people need deeper work than others. Um, we definitely want to always work on healing the liver, getting the liver to be unburdened. And what I mean by that is we need to lower our toxic burden because if the liver can't handle the amount of toxins that your body's dealing with, it doesn't matter if you have a healthy liver or not, it's going to flood into your cells, into your brain, into your lymphatics. So there are supplements. It's usually going to be supplements that help the liver. And like I said, this really is specific to the person, but some easy things that people can do is get a castor oil pack or make your own. I'm a huge fan. I've been a fan of castor oil packs for about 15 years when I had a, I didn't know back then about hormones, but I had a cyst on my ovary and I didn't realize it was, I was having estrogen dominance in this, in this stage of my life, but I used a castor oil pack to make it go away when an OBGYN told me, oh, we'll just take your ovary out. You already had two kids. Who cares? I was like, because she said birth control first. I was like, there's no effing way I'm doing that. And there's no way you're taking my ovary out. Let me get back to you now that I know why I have this bump on my stomach. Uh, let me get back to you. So I, I literally had remembered that a midwife taught me about castor oil packs, like when I was pregnant with my first or my second, one of them taught me that. And so I just started making my own packs. And sure enough, one month cyst was gone. And so I've always taught people about this, but I go to bed every single night with the castor oil pack on my liver. And I poop every single day, by the way, but I don't have constipation, but it really helps. And it's an inexpensive way to at least I do it too. I, I, I will say it, it does help some. Um, but it's not the end all be all for constipation. I'll tell you a few other things. Yeah, I do a castor oil every list. day. Yeah, keep going. Number keep two, going. you need to be making sure you're drinking enough water. I mean, absorbing water is different than drinking water. So you just put a pinch of pink salt in your water. So you're using more of the water that you're getting. You're getting some more minerals and your body's able to retain more of that hydration. That's a really big deal. And the other thing is most 
women are stressed. I'm going back to the stress thing again. So putting breathing exercises and tools for stress management into your life three times a day, two times a day, just something that is going to get your body in parasympathetic. You can use, you know, acupuncture or chiropractic. Like there's tools you can use having a massage, but you can also get yourself into parasympathetic. And when we're in sympathetic fight or flight, the blood leaves your gut. It goes into your arms or legs so you can fight or run away. So just reducing stress can pick up the sluggishness of the bowels. So these are like some of the easy ways. Of course, there's supplements. I love ozonated magnesium for bowel movements, um, making sure you have enough fiber. Um, sometimes certain probiotics can make a really big difference, but I'm really picky with probiotics. They're not all good and you should never stay on the same one. Um, but those are all things that help get them moving. Uh, but ultimately, you know, repairing the gut and seeing why is the gut inflamed that it's so sluggish is the most important thing. And in my world, the three things that I find are the biggest problems besides what I already mentioned are heavy metals, infections, and mold. So these are the things that are usually disrupting gut health. Medications can do it. Hormones will absolutely cause disrupted gut flora in your microbiome to not be as healthy as it could be. So whether it's birth control or hormone replacement, it has an impact on our gut health. Taking Tylenol or Advil has impacts on our liver, on our on our microflora. We know these drugs affect that. So if you're having pain and that's why you're taking those things and we got to figure out how to resolve those issues. So it keeps going deeper. There are layers always underneath of the, of the why. You guys, I'm so excited. We are doing a free masterclass for you. It's actually on nontoxicfamily.com slash masterclass. That's nontoxicfamily.com slash masterclass. And it's going to be all about how to get rid of your gut infections, how to get rid of parasites. If you have painful digestion, if you're suffering from poor sleep, if you've got constant exhaustion, massive joint pain, or skin issues, then you need to get rid of the parasites that are holding your body hostage. I'm gonna tell you right now, you're thinking, I don't have parasites, I don't have parasites. Yes, you do, I have Crystal with me. Crystal, tell them your joke. Yeah. If you have a pulse, then you have a parasite or more. And the thing about parasites is they're sneaky. And even if they came back negative on a stool test that you did before, that doesn't matter. They can still be present. And so on this masterclass, we're going to teach you all the tips and tricks that you might have heard of, but didn't know how to use, like diatomaceous earth, pumpkin seed protocols, garlic and berberine and black walnut, because you can't do all of these things, but you need to select a few that work for you. So we're going to go through all of that in this masterclass. All right, and my son created a new site. It's called Non-Toxic Family. And if you're not following, go to nontoxicfamilynow.com or on Facebook, go to Non-Toxic Family. You'll see my son. He does all these great videos on how to be healthy. They're really great. And we actually put the mat free masterclass on this site. So it's nontoxicfamily.com slash masterclass and sign up for free. Look forward to seeing you guys. So I want to give a tip that I have for the castor oil pack. And I have some videos. If you guys go to chantelrayway.com slash castor oil, you'll see a bunch of training videos that I've done. I do the castor oil pack every single night. But one thing I've added to the mix is I put it on. And first of all, for me, because of where I am, I use about five or six tablespoons of castor oil. Everyone says like one or two tablespoons. That's going to do nothing for me. I'm doing five or six tablespoons. On top of that, um, I use a heating pad for at least 30 minutes and I have one that sits right on my stomach and I've actually been putting castor oil on my thyroid for it to help as well. Putting a, a heating pad here just at night, my son and I are watching. So that's just a tip that I have. Um, I want you to talk a little bit more. You briefly touched on the probiotic. I love what you said about changing that probiotic up. What do you look for in a probiotic when you see one? Like, how do you know uh, this is a good one? And what are some of your favorite brands? And what would you say? How often would you change it up and why? Yeah, I would change it every time you run out. 
Every time you run out, go to a new one. Um, how you know they're good? Well, I would never buy my probiotic from Costco, Walgreens, Walmart, or any bargain box ever, ever place. Um, I My favorite companies are going to be more professional use companies like Systemic Formulas. They have amazing probiotics that are specifically designed with a prebiotic to feed the good bacteria that you're actually taking. They have ones for the immune system, for the nervous system. They just came out with an endocrine system one. They have a skin kit. Um, those are my, those are the top of the line. There's nothing like that on the marketplace. That's the only, it's their biome line. Um, Cellcore does have a really good probiotic that I like, CT, biotic. Um, I mean, there's a lot of good ones from Zymogen. So there are really good ones, but uh, you know, I would just, to me, you're looking for different strains. So you have the beneficial yeast, then you have the traditional like acidophilus, lactobacillus type. Um, and then you have the bacillus type uh, strains. So you just want to kind of rotate through the different strains because the goal of the gut is the goal for better health in the gut is diversity. So we just learned the more, more diverse. That's by the way, that's one of the reasons I love fasting so much is because it creates a di more diverse gut. And it also helps get rid of bad stuff that's in there that's feeding off of the foods that you're eating when you give your body a rest. But um, yeah, so using different ones. And like I said, my favorite ones, absolutely no question right now, the systemic line of biome, they're just phenomenal uh, because they're giving you what they studied and tested over 10 years, the right prebiotic to go with the strains that they actually bloom in your gut. There's just nothing else like it. It's a really uh, awesome line that they've come out with a couple of years ago. Talk about the ozonated mm -hmm. um, magnesium and why is that different than just taking regular magnesium? Well, ozone's amazing. It, it's it's an interesting um, type of oxygen because it we find that it actually can help remove biofilm and remove some of the bad gut flora while preserving the good. Um, so that's what ozone's great for. People can do rectal insufflations with ozone. That's what we see. Um, but so the ozone magnesium, it does help with the lining of the gut. Um, but ultimately, it, ma it makes you poop like you will go and you can take up to four of those babies. Like you should go at least two to three times a day. The goal is two to three bowel movements every day so that you're not building up toxins back into your system. I love that. And I love that you said that two to three times because everyone thinks, oh, if I just went poop once, I'm fine. And one of the things I always say, my, my dad is actually an internal medicine doctor. And he says this, he says, what happens is let's say someone needs to poop 12 inches, right? Well, what happens is they poop six inches and they're like, oh, I'm not constipated because I pooped. And then that six inches is backed up Built into in their colon, body, right? And it keeps backing up. Yeah. What other kind of supplements or tips do you have to get the bowel moving? Yeah. I mean that those are really, those are my favorite ones. Making, making sure you have enough water. Most people that's a problem making sure you're doing tools for reducing stress. Um, you can do the castor oil packs. You can do abdominal massage. Um, I listen, I'm a chiropractor. When I first started getting adjusted, I was constipated. I was back in my day. I was a really sick person. I had been on tons of antibiotics. I was on steroids for asthma. I was very unhealthy growing up. And literally one month into getting adjustments, I wasn't having to take Metamucil anymore. So the, my nervous system was in a healthier place that my bowels were moving better. I had better alignment in my pelvis and I just started pooping every day, which that hadn't happened in years, even without all the other things that I now know help <laughs> that one thing. And it not only did that happen, but, um, my, I had miserable periods. I had really bad hormone imbalances and I just thought it was normal. Like, Oh, I see the commercial on TV. I'll just take my doll lay in bed for a whole day every month. And this is what women have to go through. They normalized it. Um, but after a couple of months of adjustments, so first was the constipation. Second was never had a painful period again. So that's like what, that's what sparked my entire, like, 
transformation and wellness journey to be so passionate about what I do because my life changed, my health changed in, in adding these things into my life. It, it, and it wasn't enough to heal the asthma. I had to learn about food. I had to learn about detox. I had, there were all these layers that contributed to my body healing. Um, but that's what started it all with constipation. <laughs> I went for neck pain, by the way, I had, a, I had a car accident. I went for neck pain and my life was forever changed from that accident. For well, the let's talk about your fasting experience and how you are able to teach people who have never fasted before to even go on a five day water fast. Yes. So, um, every year in January, I do a live training. I have like a, I have a DIY version of it that people can have as well, but I do a live training every January. So we get a whole group of people together. I teach you how to get your, your body into a state of ketosis and know that it's working. And then we all, um, and, and how to find the right eating windows and to really get your body ready, just like you would prepare for a marathon before you did a marathon you don't go into a five day water fast without preparing your body and getting it ready. Otherwise you're miserable. Like it could be difficult, hard. You don't understand. You feel like you're suffering or, or starving. And really there is a whole mindset that also comes along with that preparation. Um, but it is so empowering. So the, the way I got into the five day fast once again was through my own healing. I had, uh, broken my shoulder in 2017. I needed reconstruction of my shoulder. And <clears throat> a year and a half later, I was still having so much pain. I would basically just be pick up my mouse and I would be in pain by the end of the day. And I had read about water fasting and how when you do the right water fast, you get a flood of stem cells that comes in and your body also breaks down the old stuff and gets rid of it for food and uses it as this energy source and then floods with new stem cells to rebuild at the end, knowing how to do this the right way. So I literally did it and the pain was gone by day three and it never came back again. Mm -hmm. So that's what got me like, I have to teach people this now because people have surgery or an injury and they think this old injury is how they're stuck for the rest of their life. And that is not the case. It doesn't have to be that way. I've had people come to me that were about to pay $10,000 for stem cells in their knees. And I said, just give me, I said, give me six weeks. And I taught them how to do the water fasting and they did not have to go get the stem cells. Not only that was out of his braces and was walking on the beach for the first time in years, was able to walk in the sand. So it, it's amazing. It's amazing. Guys, I just want to interrupt for just a second. And I want you to hear Paul Saladino talk about why liver is so important. And if you don't like liver, we have another option for you. Your ancestors were eating liver. And the reason that this sort of wisdom has been passed down is because liver is very nutritious. It's basically nature's multivitamin. If you look at the nutrients in meat, they're great. You've got zinc, you got B6, you got B12, you got some K2. But if you look at liver, it really complements what's in muscle meat. And there are many unique nutrients found in organs, specifically liver as a powerhouse of these, that are difficult to obtain outside of liver. Like meat and organs are like peanut butter and jelly. They just go together. They're supposed to be eaten together. The easiest way to eat liver is just to do it raw. If you don't want to eat liver raw, you can cook it. But the reason that I like to do it raw is because there are unique nutrients in liver that are probably somewhat degraded when you cook the liver. This really is like the most nutrient rich supplements that you can find. And they are amazing. I have tried them. I absolutely love them. So just go to heartandsoil.co, use the coupon code Chantal Ray and save you some money there. I want you to talk a little bit about um, anything that you know about frozen shoulder. There's different doctors out there that some people say that estrogen, if you're low in estrogen, they're saying like it's the studies are that 90 some percent of women um, that are going through menopause have bouts with frozen shoulder. And so we all know that estrogen plays a role in stimulating bone growth, reducing inflammation and promoting connective tissue integrity. And so it kind of would make sense, but I feel like there's certain doctors that are like, no, that there's not a connection, but to me, how could it not be a connection when 
it's, I can't remember what the exact number is, but it's like something like the people who are getting frozen shoulder are mostly women and almost all of them are in menopause. Can you talk about that at all? Um, it's, it's not something that I see a lot in my practice. That's not what typically people are coming to me for, but Yes, it is something that is out there. Um, the way that I look at hormones, it, there's two things that are causing problems in menopause with hormones. Number one, the adrenals are now taking over the job of making estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone from the ovaries. So if you remember back in puberty, remember those fun times, that's when our brain is connecting to our ovaries and men, their testes. Menopause is when the brain is going offline again. And now conventional world is saying, you just don't make them anymore. But no, the job is given, the baton is handed over to your adrenal glands to make those hormones. So your adrenal glands should make enough that your joints aren't falling apart, your bones aren't thinning, your vagina isn't painful and thinning um, and dry. Um, you should have enough to have a straw, a brain, you should have enough to have energy and decent sleep. Um, the problem is twofold. Either number one, you're not making enough for some reason because the adrenals are bogged down. They're just too busy with all the stresses you're dealing with because sex hormones are very low priority for survival. Fight or flight is survival mode. So when we're in survival, we're not having sex, we're not reproducing. It's just a very low priority. It's the first thing to go in men and women both. Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing that has to be supported is the adrenals. That's why I said the self-care, taking time to de-stress. It can't, I can't like emphasize it enough. The second aspect is at a cellular level, every cell of your body has a cell membrane and that cell membrane is where all your hormone receptors are. By the time you're 50 years old, you've been exposed to body lotions, hair products, uh, you know, dry cleaning, environmental toxins. Most people have mercury fillings in their teeth, have gotten vaccines. Um, we're just bombarded with environmental pesticides. Now the jet fuel has aluminum in it. So we have aluminum in our rain and in our air from all the airplanes in the air. We are overburdened with toxins and those toxins damage our cell membranes. And now, even if you're making enough hormones, your cells cannot use the hormones. It's like the lock on your front door is the hormone receptor. And then you have the hormone is the key. It's like someone taking a hammer and smashing the lock. The hormone cannot fit in the lock anymore. So you feel like you have no hormones, even if your blood work says you do. I, I love what you said. I want to bring back what you said uh, that I just forgot to ask you about. One of the things you said I loved is that absorbing water is different than drinking water. And and, and I'll add on absorbing nutrients is different than taking nutrients, right? right? And, and so it's by what I'm talking about. Yeah. yeah. So like, for example, when you say, okay, if we want to absorb water better, taking Celtic sea salt or taking pink Himalayan salt or some kind of sea salt with that water is going to help you to absorb the water better. Any other tips on absorbing water or nutrients that you've seen that have been successful? The biggest thing is cellular detoxification and repair. It, it's not going to be like a quick, easy thing on, on here that I can explain. It is protocols with supplements that we use where first we get the liver and the kidneys and the gut working as high level as they can. And then we start detoxing the cells of the body. And then we go into the brain and we use protocols to get heavy metals mostly out of the brain. And some people need more. Some people have additional toxins. You know, once we start getting heavy metals out, you can start working on other things like imbalanced gut flora, candida overgrowth, parasites. But in my practice, I've really found that dealing with heavy metals as a base foundation first actually allows them to have less symptoms going through detox, but also be more successful in the long term in these other areas that we, we infections will call them. Um, but yeah. Awesome. Well, this has been amazing. Tell listeners where they can find you and where they can follow you. Yes. Uh, my website is drnicole.com, D-R-N-I-C-O-L-E.com. 
And you can find me on Instagram and Facebook at Dr. Nicole Rothman or Rothman Health Solutions. Same thing on YouTube and TikTok as well. Awesome. Well, this has been great. You guys stay tuned. We've got another episode coming up in just a few. Bye-bye for now.